Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Our Cloud School. Today in this video, we are going to have a demonstration of a use case wherein we are going to copy the file from SFTP server to the blob storage. And for that, I'm going to create provision the SFTP server or SFTP services in Azure. First of all, we'll upload the file in that SFTP server. And then from there, we will download it to another storage container. This is the Azure Data Factory instance which I'll be using. But before I use that, let me just create the SFTP instance in Azure. And for that, I'm going to log on to the Azure portal. And this is my Azure portal section. So let's create a resource which is of type SFTP. So as we know that we can configure the SFTP service into Azure storage account. So what we are going to create is the storage account resource. So I'm going to search for storage account, which is this one. Let's create a new storage account. This is just to show you how do you create a storage account with the SFTP feature enabled in it. So I'm going to provide the name of my storage account, which is let's say this one. It will check whether the storage account name is available or not. I'm going to choose the redundancy to the local. You can choose anyone. The key point to remember here is in the advanced section, you have to enable this hierarchical namespace. Or I can say that if you have a storage account which is of type ADLS Gen 2, then that storage account can be used as an SFTP server. With that option, I'm going to click on review because the rest of the settings I would like to keep it as is. The only setting we want to change is the hierarchical namespace, which is enabled right here from this section, as you can see. So let's click on create and so our storage account or ADLS storage account is created. Let's go to the resource. And from this storage account resource option, as you can see that this icon for the container has been changed now. So it is of type ADLS Gen 2. And you can verify with this particular settings option, which is this one. So let's go to the SFTP configuration. So under the settings, you can click on this SFTP option. And this way you can able to, you should be able to enable the SFTP by clicking on this option or this button. Let's click on enable SFTP that will enable the SFTP on this storage account. So SFTP is enabled. Next thing what we need to do is we need to create a user or local user. Before I create a user, I need to have a container in that SFTP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a container. So let's call the container name as in container one. And that's where we are going to have our source file. So I'll go back to the SFTP under the settings section. Here I will define a new user which is of the SFTP user. I'm going to give it a username as an SFTP admin, the name of the user. Here the password, I'm going to choose the option as an SSH password. If you would like to use the key based authentication, then you can use the SSH key. Next, you are going to choose the container on which this particular user will have the permission. So you can specify or select one or more container by selecting the containers from this option. So this is the container I've selected. Next, I'm going to define the permissions. So here are the list of permissions which you can define for this SFTP container. So I'm going to first of all, give it a list read and these permissions. So I'm not going to allow any delete permission for now. So here we are going to give it a name to your to our container, which is the container one, which is going to be your home directory. With that, our local user settings is confirmed along with its permission. So let's click on add and that will generate the SSH password for the SFTP account. So I'm going to copy that SSH password. Next, I will go to the log key vault option. And from here on the key vault, I'll click on secret. And that is where I'm going to add the secret or the SS SFTP password. So let's add a new secret SFTP password and then I will upload the password into the key vault so that our pipeline from our pipeline will read the secret value from the key vault instead of directly using it in the pipeline. So now we have our SFTP created along with the container. So let's verify the SFTP and upload the SFTP or a file into the SFTP first of all. So for that, I'm going to use the Win SAP, which is a graphical user interface to use for SSH, SSH connection. So here in the login name, remember that you have to provide the login name as in the name of your storage account and the name of the user. So that's the username you need to provide for the 
server name or the host name you need to provide the full name which is the name of your storage account dot blog dot core dot windows dot net this is the namespace or the name you need to provide next you need to use the password just for the testing so i'm going to use the same password which we have just now generated with that i'm going to click on ok or login so that will log in to the sftp server with that it is going to successful with the correct username and password it has successfully logged on to the sftp host account now here i'm going to simply upload the file to the home directory from my local machine so i'll go to the document section and i'll simply copy this particular excel file so the file is successfully copied if we verify this file onto the blob storage container if we'll go to the containers you would see that the file should be available and which you can use this file as the blob container or it's a normal blob container as well so now let's go to the Azure Data Factory instance and that is where we are going to define the link service for connecting to the SFTP server. So first of all, I am going to create a new link service. So let's create a new link service which is of type SFTP. So search with SFTP. That's the type of SFTP connection we want. So I'm going to select this option. Give it a name to the link service as an LS then SFTP which is the name of the link service. We have to provide the host name for the SFTP. So the same host name I'm going to provide, which I've used for the testing. Fully qualified name of your storage account, which is a block qualified name. Port name is going to remain as is SSH validation. I'm going to disable the SSH key based validation because we would like to use the user account based or the password based validation. So I'm going to next, I'm going to use the username, which is going to be this one. SFTP or the name of your storage account, then SFTP admin. Next, the password. You can add the password in a plain text right here, but it is highly not recommended by Microsoft Azure that you should not never ever use the password or secrets in a plain text on your link services. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the key vault option and with that it will require to use a key vault link service. So at the moment, we do not have any key vault link service. As you can see from this option, there is no key vault link service available here. So first of all, let's create a link service, which is of type key vault, add new link service. I'm going to give it a name as an ls underscore kv. I'm going to use the option as in select key vault. You can also use the parameterized way like we have learned in our previous example. I'm going to just click on copy this. I'll go to the key. Now here we are going to add the access policy using that manage identity. So the permission which we are going to use is the get and list for the secret. We are not interested in any of the key and the certificate because we just want to read the secret. I'm going to search for the manage identity of the data factory. Let's select new and review it and create a permission. So now our key vault has the permission or already data factory manage instance has a permission to the keyboard having this in place if i'm going to test the connection i should be able to verify my keyboard based link service and the verification is completed i'll click on create so create a keyboard link service that will create a new link service which is of type keyboard now having this link service in place i can fetch the secret name as you can see that we have now the option to select our secrets so i'm going to select the secret which is a sftp secret next if you would like you can use the specific secret version i'm going to keep the latest version as is and that is it our sftp link service is configured with the help of key vault link test connection so this time the connection should be verified successfully as you can see so our sftp link service connection is working fine and I'm going to click on create to create the link service. So now we have created two link service, one for the key vault to fetch the secret from the key vault, another one for the SFTP. If we click on this verify code, so this is what the code looks like. Here we have the username, which is this one coming from the plain text and the password, which is the, this one, which is coming from with the help of Azure link service so let's create a pipeline to test our link services. I'm going to click, click on create new pipeline and we'll be using this copy data activities to copy the file. I'm going to define a new data set and this time the data set which we are going to use is the SFTP data set. So let's search for SFTP 
and here we are going to specify the file type as in binary and then the link service is the link service which we have just now created as you can see that the file path it shows that this is the file path it should look for and if I scroll it to the right I should click on the browse and this is the exact same file which we are able to see which is available here in our SFTP endpoint which is here so let's select the file which we would like to copy so I have selected a file click on sync to verify the sync I'm going to select a new sync type which is of type blob storage because blob storage is our destination type here I'm going to use the blob storage link service which we have already created for the blob output I'm going to specify the output container name and the folder name as well so let's click on ok and that is where we are going to specify the name of our file so our source and sync are ready if i click on the binary which is the destination i can specify the file name here as well the file name as an xlsx which is the name of the file we want to create a copy of next file uh, now let's verify our pipeline the pipeline is valid which means that we should be able to debug the pipeline i'm going to click on debug to see if I am able to make use of SFTP connector or link service and copy the file from SFTP location to the block storage location. The pipeline is successfully completed. If I click on this lens icon, I should be able to see that it has copied a file from SFTP location to file to a block storage location. So if I go to the block storage location, let's, let's go click on all resources. That's the location or the storage account. I'll click on container, input container, and then the output folder, and that is the file we have now. So with that, we have proven how to use the SFTP based link service. We have created an SFTP into the Azure storage container or ADLS storage container, and we have verified how to perform the copy activity from the SFTP to the storage account using Data Factory. That is it in this demonstration. If you found this useful, please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.